Um, okay, let me just think about this. What am I going to talk about again? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's. Hi, I'm Alvin. We're mostly here. Should we? Should we just begin? And how much time do I have? Ten minutes for the pizza, right? Until the pizza arrives. I should. I don't like sitting down. Okay. Who knows what day of week it is? It's Monday. Wait, that's wrong. Uh, it's Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, just a show of hands? Who actually knows what Docker is? Just under, you know, who doesn't know what Docker is or something? Who doesn't know what Docker is? Okay, <laughs> three. Who doesn't? Who's not a girl? No, this is for girls. <laughs> um, and okay, so most people. So who uses Docker in production or uses it every day? One, well, a few. Actually, I don't. I use Docker not so much. You're probably going to think I'm an idiot. Then. Oh no. Okay, who knows what Alpine Linux is? Three, four, five. Shit! Okay, I'm probably not going to tell you anything that you already know. I'm sorry. You can leave now. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I was actually going to give a talk about systemd and spawn. Who knows what systemd and spawn is? Okay. Well, the same amount of the same psychos, about four of them back there. Um, I was going to give a talk about systemd and spawn, but I, 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 what, what the hell? Okay, I've made sure there's a cute picture <laughs> to keep you all entertained. Um, but I thought I would revisit Docker because I've, if someone who knows me, I might have bitched about Docker, and I, and I have complaints about Docker, but to be honest. I came back to Docker last weekend for a project, and Docker is really awesome. I really love the Docker file, and I found a nice workflow. So Docker is back in my good books. And but there, there's some freaky things. But there are some freaky things. Okay. Sorry, Valentine, for disturbing you. Okay, but there's some things about Docker, I don't know if you feel the same way, I, I really, when I came back to Docker, I thought the Docker Hub, is it changed? Because it really sucks now. And I really don't like the Docker API, like you know how you use a tool and then, oh that's easy to use, but every time I go, I come back to Docker, I'm like, how do you find the size of a container? I honestly could not figure that out today. Does anyone know how to do that? The same psychos in the, in the back? No. And then after like not touching Docker for like six months, I came back to Docker, I don't know what version it is now, hoping that they solve problems like logging and they don't think they really have. Um, so and yeah, I have some complaints about Docker, but I used it last weekend and I thought it was awesome. What's my next slide about? But there's one I, I run I run Docker in a production service called GrepTweet. And GripTweet is used by lots of people on the internet to see what people have said on Twitter. So it's currently very popular in, this, in these like cult, strange sort of conspiracy groups for people to work out what people have said and sort of find correlations. But anyway, I, I run the service for free and all it is, is um, as you can see from the Docker file, who, um, you can all hopefully read a Docker file. But if not, I'm going to walk you through it. A Docker file basically builds your system, and all this, this system does uses this Arch Linux base, it installs like Nginx and some PHP and stuff. It copies the configurations in place and exposes port 80. It's actually a very, very simple generic uh, image for running any PHP application. And to and to my shock and horror. This quite minimalistic, I thought, thing to run a PHP is unbelievably 962 megabytes. Don't you think that's a bit large? Have I effed up something? I mean, I haven't been able to get it, well, I haven't been able to get it smaller until recently. 
uh, and this is what my kind of my talk is about. So I was pretty pissed off, like anyone should be, um, that my, my whole operating system stack was so large. I wanted to reduce the size, reduce the complexity, make it faster, blah, 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 blah. So people have been pointing out Alpine Linux to me. And Alpine, Alpine Linux uh, is actually pretty awesome. It's, um, it's got, when, the base image is like five megabytes. I mean, five megabytes, it's really, really small. And the most important thing is, um, is that it's based on all the, all the, all the uh, packages are, are built against the muscle library. Who knows what muscle is? One person. Two people. So Alphine is really small and it makes use of the um, muscle library and I'm not telling you anything new. Um, and I, I dare say it's, it's probably like one of the biggest developments in, in operating systems in the last few years. Muscle is pretty big news. It's like a modern libc. Um, the, the old GNU libc which every other operating system, every other Linux operating system is based upon maybe, I think, I think Android uses, uh, what is the Android one, Bionic? Dialipsy. Dialipsy, okay, it uses a different one. But it's really interesting to have a new libc right now, and that's what Muscle brings oh, yeah. to the game. And uh, it makes everything a lot smaller and leaner. It's just amazing using an, a, a Muscle-based system like Alpine. I, it's just, it just like feels like what computing should be, really. Uh, I was really, really enjoying it last weekend. But of course, the big problem with the, with Alpine Linux is that uh, you know your flash plugin or uh, your Intel drivers, anything that's kind of proprietary and closed source, they don't um, they don't generally provide binaries for for Muscle because no one's building it because it's quite new. So unfortunately, you can't run you wouldn't run the Alpine Linux on your desktop. So, but it, you could run it on your on your Docker image, and this is why. It's so freaking awesome. So um, I was going to talk about how I reduced the size of um, of RepTweet to a much smaller image, but I didn't actually finish that demo. So I'm going to talk about something else entirely. I have a webcam. Who has a webcam at home? To spy on their helper. One person. Three <laughs> lines. Okay, they they generally suck. Um, so I bought this Podscam one, which was recommended to me because it was the least worst one of them all, but not really. It really sucks. Like there's no HTTP support, so you have. To, so the only way it like gets out uh, images is through FTP. I mean that's kind of sucky. Um, and it has this like <coughs> cool uh, Podscam. Oh, just probably broke my internet. It has this Podscam app, but it, it works through this thing called PTP. Uh, if you can understand, if you can, uh, if you know your networks, basically, I have this in my home, and it tunnels out to to a server in China, so that I can access my my webcam through China or whatever or Hong Kong uh, to my webcam. And I thought to myself, that's bullshit. I'm disabling that right away. And then I, I, and then I put on UPnP, and UPnP when you when you turn that on. I noticed that uh, my IP had like five ports open on my uh, on my IP at home, and I thought, no, that's bullshit. I'll turn it off. But unfortunately, the UPnP uh, implementation is broken. And they didn't clear the uh, the ports. <sighs> anyway, so these things absolutely suck. So what I need is to get the the FTP. The only thing that works is the FTP. I need to somehow get that FTP push onto the web. Oh, another cute picture. So how would you do that? How would you get from FTP to the web? I mean, has anyone got some good ideas? Has some, someone wanted to solve this problem? Would you use, would you use Node.js? Would you use Golang? What would you use? Why would you just not use FTP? You can't avoid it, unfortunately. You have to use FTP because it's the only thing that webcam supports. Apache does the module. Apache FTP or something? What? Yeah, Apache module. Does Apache have FTP support? Yeah. Sounds sucky. Um, anyway, and then of course there's maybe it will work actually quite well. I don't really know. Uh, and then there's like problems like um, you know the FTP has to be authenticated, and the uh, you know when you're looking at the webcam pictures, 
you want to protect that so that not everyone can see myself naked in, in the mornings looking for food and stuff like that. So, um, and then and also I wanted, um, the, the FOSCAM generates these, these videos in this MKV format, I think it's called Matroska. But when you, when you put it onto a web page, you can't play it back because it's not MP4. So, so it would be nice if this FTP to, 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 the, to the web service could also transcode media. So I had these, all these high ambitions and I thought, this is going to be really, really hard. But then I started looking at Alpine uh, last weekend and the solution just came to me, which is freaking awesome. Um, you can see the Docker file. That's wrong, it should be another one. That's better. Um, so the, the Docker, the Alpine things, like the, the Arch one, the Alpine latest, probably I should use some stable version. I'm dragging quite a few packages. I'm using FFmpeg for the, uh, the transcoding. I'm using a light HTTPD. To be honest, it's light to weight HTTPDs in, in uh, Alpine, but light HTTPD supported uh, digest authentication. I don't know how you solve your authentication problems on the web. I just usually resort to, to digest because it's easiest. Um, and then I use VS FTPD for my, uh, my FTP server. I use Bash for my shell. Uh, I use iNotify tools. Uh, who uses? You, someone might, uses iNotify tools. Everyone. iNotify wait is fucking awesome. Sorry, excuse my language. And f unfortunately, I don't know how any in, in Docker. I don't know how, how to keep my processes running uh, other than using that p shitty Python program, Supervisor D. So that comes in. I'm exposing port 21, which is FTP. I'm exposing port 80 for the web. I'm copying in uh, an FTP configuration, I'm copying in my, my web server configuration, I'm copying this junk to keep my, my processes uh, going. This is where it gets a bit tricky. I couldn't figure out a way of um, setting username and passwords very easily. This is the quickest way I came up with it. If you wanted more FTP accounts, like for, for example, many more uh, webcams, you could just um, you know, add more lines and it will work. But this is a cool trick. But unfortunately, you need an add user line, and then using ch password, you can change, up, you can update the password. So this becomes for the FTP accounts, and then I had a separate file that is used with light HTTPD mod digest configuration to keep to keep everything running. So as you can imagine, now I have a web server, and oops, I, I now have a web server and. Uh, what the hell happened to my... I have now have a web server and um, uh, FTP server and a web server. But then there's some other stuff in the middle. I think this, I'm quite proud of this. Basically, using iNotify wait, I, when, the, when the FTP uploads an image and, and, write, and writes out that file, it, it does like a close wait write event, and then I, do, and then I start to do something. For example, if it's a Matroska file, I start FMPEGing it. If it's, if, it's, if it's a JPEG file, I just move it into the right place. So, I can probably give you a quick demo now. I'm quite proud of it. Wait, wait. Huh. Actually, I can't see what I'm doing now. So, Docker, FTP. So I built it already, so it's a bit quick. Oh God! I need to move this, don't I? Fail to remove. You cannot remove a running container. Oops. <laughs> Make stop. Oh, I was already running it. That's why. I forgot. This is why I don't like Docker. Why does it take so long to stop something? Okay, so, um, oh, I have to delete it now. Uh, RM, bye. So now I'm running the FTP server. So if I go, um, this is gonna be amazing. NC FTP, I think my default user like that. That's my home IP if you want to DOS me. I think it's password. Actually, I can't remember. What was the default password? 
Use the pass? The default password was user password. Oops. Password. So I'm logged in. So this is the FTP thing, and then I'm going to just put a file. Come on, upload. Jesus, why is it so slow? And now I have on my on my home machine. You can just log. I can just log in using the password again if my internet decides to work. Am I on 3G? I'm on 3G, guys. I'm on 3G. This is what it used to be like three years ago, man. If this uploads, then the, the image should just appear here. Okay, well, I think that's boring demo done. But, and, I mean, does anyone feel like they might find that useful if they have webcams? Just one question. Um, yeah. These webcams, very often, I think they're also running Linux, right? Uh, yeah. It's a question that you, you cannot just hack the web, webcam itself. You, like, <laughs> hack the webcam. I mean, that would be the dream. But most people make that. I mean, these, these little devices are, are very limited, and you probably don't want to spend your time hacking with them. I mean, they, they have to optimize it for a whole bunch of reasons and. Anyway, so any FTP file, I, uh, any image that I, I upload here, now get up, uploaded by the username, uh, the date, and uh, the file name. So basically now I have a very cool way of looking at my, my pictures that, that, that my webcam push. And of course, I can add lots and lots of uh, webcams, so each one has a unique ID. And I, I can see what's going on, basically. And I think it's a really nice solution. I've been using it for the last week or so, kind of, and it works really, really well. And the best of all is that the is that I can press the videos for uh, web for for web videos, so I can see what's going on uh, by video. You know, because getting video on the web is is quite tricky. You know, you have to do that sort of web video fast start crap and all that stuff. So yeah, that's. The service, uh, and I think it shows you that. Well, the the one thing I wanted to uh, oh I didn't show you, but the Docker image that whole thing, that whole service is eighty megabytes or something like that. I mean, it's it's tiny really. And it, I mean, it, it could be a lot. It could be about twenty megs, but the FFmpeg and all its junk dependencies push it up to eighty. So, um, yeah, the takeaway that I want, wanted to share with you guys is that, yeah, Alpine Linux, if you want like a small, responsive, efficient uh, Linux space for your, your Docker images, you really should be choosing Alpine. I've been using it and, and it works great. Uh, muscle is also something you want to watch out for. And this, just, this is just a general gripe that I have with the IT industry, especially Node.js developers. Who are Node.js developers? I hate you! No, like, I find that a lot of Node.js developers, especially, they use a lot of dependencies. Like, it's quite easy, they just use some frameworks, and all of a sudden, they have some dependencies which depend on something else, and it gets, it get, it gets nuts real quickly. But the, cool, but the cool thing, instead of, what I was trying to say, instead of module reuse, like what JavaScript programmers are thinking that they're doing, if you use packages that are in the Alpine Linux, these packages are usually quite quite, uh, what do you call it, stable C programs that have been around for you know, 10, uh, 10 years, like the FTP server I'm using there is like a 15 year old program that's been obviously used by lots of people and is extremely stable. So I've been running my service using a very stable FTP server, a very stable web server, and I'm getting uh, fantastic results. Like, just one more thing here. If, if, you think about, if you think about it, it's pretty amazing that I've, I've implemented what I set out to do in basically, what the hell, 131 lines of code. I think it's, I think it's shit hot, but you guys, I hate you guys. <laughs> Woo! If anyone um, is interested, it's, it's on my GitHub thing, and if, if, if anyone can shave a few lines off uh, any of the configurations
Because I don't know about you guys, do you, does anyone spend time trying to make their web server or whatever configuration quite small? Because the default distribution um, configs are usually like thousand lines. I think I think Bind or, or there was one program in that's usually shipped like Bind that had like a three thousand line. No, I think it was Squid. Squid by default has like a five thousand line config. For, uh, config. Uh, the developers argue that so that they can document all the features, but I find it fucking ins insane when they do that. So I spent honestly maybe too long, too many hours just trying to get the 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 default uh, light uh, HTTP. I mean, it's not really light. This one, no way, it's light. <laughs> uh, I tried. I, I spent ages trying to get that down to 25 lines of code, and the FTP so 10 lines, and then obviously that that one the one script the glue that does everything move.sh 42 lines. It depends on own, 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 I notify. Okay, I've talked enough. It's pizza already. Yes. Okay. Any 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 questions about um, this stuff? Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so Docker makes sense when you run multiple containers on the same machine, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. In that case, the size of the base image, if all the containers run on the same base image, it doesn't matter, because they will share with uh, I don't quite understand. You, you're saying that it's not... It's a flat uh, path base image. So the path base image can be like... Maybe it's 800 megs, right? But it contains everything. But and then you, get, then you get small layers on top of it. That is what he's saying. Yeah. It's okay to build small layers on top of a host system that's quite bloated. <laughs> no, no. What I say is that if we try to make the base Linux image smaller, in case we run multiple containers on the same machine, it doesn't actually uh, play a big part in the overall size. Oh, you're saying that, like, your, ba your host system is like 10 gigabytes, so having 40, 40 megabyte Docker images is a bit lame or something? Uh, I'm more saying that if you have like 20 containers running the same machine, yeah. and they all use, for example, Debian as a base image, yeah. they would all containers on Shadian. Oh yeah, image. true, true, because uh, especially if, if you use uh, ButterFS as your back, back end, then it, it will be space efficient. Yeah, um, spatial efficiency is one thing, but you want you want your your system to be lightweight, to take le up less memory, uh, and to be more responsive, and that's what Alpine gives you. And Debian, Debian is like too general. It's not. It's just all over the place. The packaging in Alpine is much simpler. It's just an it's it's a delight to use. You really must use Alpine, just like. I know it sounds extremely geeky and lame, but just typing commands on it is just so much faster and a joy to use. Everything's just faster. Looking at the solution, so you think you are bringing with a bit of the Dover philosophy, right? Running one service well, actually, per, per container. So you try to put, for example, HTTP, FTP, plus image processing. Would it be more sense, even would be increased as a total image size? It would be more efficient to, like, have better control. I don't understand. Like, for example, you write FTP in one container. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I noticed. I, I don't. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. I noticed in the Docker community that Docker people generally prefer to run one process per per container, right? Yes. Yes. I think that's a bit weird, because I think of this as being yeah, like it's doing a particular job, and a lot of people in the Docker community like, oh, I'm, I've got my LS in a, no, LS is a bad example, I've got my, I got my FFmpeg in a container, I've got this in a, in a container, and then you have to join them up again, somehow in your host system, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit fugly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I prefer to do, I, I prefer to keep it. It's, it's actually giving you more security, because the surface, uh, for example, the attack surface, it will give you only online HTTPD, but now if you put everything in the SQL container, you have a multiple Possible holes yeah, the true, code. true. Someone compromised some FTP server, now they compromise the rest of it. Last time um, you won't need a supervisor anymore, you don't need to... That's true, that's true. I guess it's I guess it's more security, but I just think it's more more work and... Yeah, but it's more convenient. It's, 
Dude, having three containers to run your service, I mean, you're going to have to have some crazy system default to keep them all going and synchronized. Yeah, but this is where the simple solution may work, but once you have a more complicated solution, which is a modularized deployment, is far more Modular, mod Modularized is more complicated. Your, your, your example will be more complicated in running this. Yeah, but maintenance will be easier. How will it be more easier? If you want to deploy, for example, you have updated only one configuration file, so you need to restart all of them, and then you just deploy a nice well, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I, I'm quite happy with this way, but, yeah, I mean, I just think, yeah, I don't know, you guys can decide, hopefully you follow what we were saying. Any, any other questions? Um, I think one point is if you want to scale the, like, the, the image processing part, you can just spawn more image processing containers for which you link. Uh, you might not want to spawn multiple HTTP or FTP instances. I still don't understand. So, I mean, if you, if you, have, if you, if you have different parts of the application where you can scale independently of uh, some services that you're doing. Oh, like, are you trying to say like you might use an FTP service in another project? Uh, no, like for your M, uh, your M JPEG, right? So yeah. You can transfer this, right? Just to encrypt so, so if you have multiple webcams, you want to transfer multiple stream, yeah. but you can like one instances in this. Oh, uh, true. So you can use it for parallelization almost. But then that makes everything more complicated. Right, so but you can end up using like, like have you heard of Compose? So if you I've heard of Docker Compose, yeah. I haven't yeah. used it. That's a good suggestion, but... Um, I'm trying to make things as... I'm trying to make my life as simple as possible. Right, I mean, I mean the but, that, but that's an interesting thing you say. I, yeah, I, that's an interesting way of... I mean, I'm, I'm really digging containerization, and you just suggested something I didn't really think of. So, th yeah, thanks. Um, anything else? Pizza! Where is it? Let's come back after like 15 minutes. Yeah.